Call the meeting, the February 18th meeting of the um, Oklahoma City Board of Adjustment. Welcome to everyone, and uh, we'd ask that you silence pagers or, well, there aren't any more pagers, are there? Cell phones or whatever is noisy. So, so we're not interrupted today. The uh, first item is the approval of the minutes of the prior meeting. Move to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the January 21st meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Yeah. Those are approved. Next is uh, requests for continuances of withdrawals. We have one item. The applicant has requested a continuance for item number seven, case number 13219, to April 1st, 2010. Okay. Do you want to argue that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Mrs. Swank is here on behalf uh, of the applicant, and I uh, think Mr. Groves um, in her practice law together, he has just uh, come out of the hospital and had surgery. Mm -hmm. I talked to Eric, and I think you all have modified that to a two-week continuance. Yes. And we would not oppose a two-week continuance. We would oppose a a continuance until April. My clients actually uh, own property across from Lakehurst uh, where a, a full building permit has been issued. It's a two-part permit, but it's fully been reviewed and approved back on October 30th. So uh, two weeks we're fine with, and okay. just wanted you, know, you all to know that uh, we are under construction. That will continue, and the question about the letter and the left turn lane we'll just deal with in two weeks. I know your staff is here, but we're okay with it. So that's what you're requesting? Yes. Okay. Two weeks. Is there any questions? What date's that? March 4th. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to move until March what? 4th. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue item number seven until the next meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Next, uh, first item then to be heard. Item number one, case number 13217, request of Charles Rini for variance to permit the encroachment of an existing building within the platted building line in the I-2 district located at 14848 Bristol Park Boulevard. My name is Ernie Ish with Ish & Associates. I'm representing Mr. Riney today and uh, uh, he's purchased a building in, uh, in doing the Alta survey uh, during that uh, uh, purchase. Uh, uh, we learned that a corner of the building extends over the uh, uh, platted building line. The platted building line is 50 feet. The normal building line in I-2 is 25 feet. We're only over a little over five feet for one corner of the building. I'd be glad to answer your questions and ask for your approval. Are there any questions? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the application. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Thank you very much. Item number two, case number 13220, request of Vintage Custom Homes for variance to permit a house that encroaches the 20-foot front building setback in PUD 1071, located at 132, I'm sorry, 13120 Northwest 6th Street. Applicant present. Item number two. Push that to the heel of the docket. Item number three. Item number three. Case number 13216. Request of Adam Atui for a variance to permit the construction of a new home that will encroach on the 15-foot side yard setback located at 3551 Northwest 22nd Street. Good afternoon. We're here on that, gentlemen. Go ahead and give us all your... 
name and address information again. So I am William O'Brien. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Um, attorney at law. My address is 9009 North May Avenue, okay. uh, number 115, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73120. Okay. Um, yeah. Adam Okay. Um, Any statements you wanted to make uh, since the last meeting? Any further statements you wanted to make since uh, we discussed at the last okay. meeting? Okay. Yeah. Well, we point out that um, many houses on the St. Clair Avenue are ranging between 16 and 22 feet from the curb. The curb, and uh, we plan to point out that this was uh, plotted in 1928 at uh, 60 feet, and the current standard is for this type of street is 50 feet, uh, we would respectfully request um, that we our application be approved. Do you have any questions? Um, I, I appreciate you presenting a couple of extra options, but I still have trouble struggling with uh, uh, the statutory standards. Uh, being met. Um, I don't see anything peculiar about this property that requires that substantial of a of a encroachment onto the uh, onto the setback. It seems like there's plenty of room on this property. I mean, it's not there's not, nothing peculiar about this property. It's a pretty standard city lot, 50 by 140. You do have 47 feet by 140, but I mean that setback is the 15 foot setback is applicable to all these inner city lots that are on the quarter. Well, is there anything uh, any suggestions that the board would have so we could so that we could do this in a way that would meet with your approval? Yeah, comply with the setback. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Design the house that complies with the setback. I mean, uh, it's a deep lot. It faces uh, St. Clair. You could take garage access from there. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of different design solutions that could could meet the the requirements. Well, uh, we will confer, and then if that's permissible, we will uh, get back to the board. If that's okay. You want a continuance? Um, would you like to discuss this further? See if we could. No, I, I did actually the last time presented the pretty much the problem that I had with the, with the noise coming from drive, the drive through. That's the reason why I want to be as as away uh, as possible from the drive through. That's the reason why you know the property actually you know when I designed it and I put it on the, the sight line it was facing the I mean completely to the south as much as possible, and then you know I had just. Uh, to expand the debit on the setback, actually, to avoid this problem. I mean, if I did not have this business actually behind me, probably I would not, not even, you know, consider, you know, coming in front of you and, and having this, this, this discussion. If your garage was on the back side of this house, it would actually give you more buffer. True, it would give me a buffer, but you know, I didn't want to completely uh, help with the setback uh, issue. Um, noise actually would travel actually with less resistance. Uh, uh, through the, the property, I mean, if there's space, actually, the sound, you know, ha has air as an element of resistance by itself, by nature. But the, 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 the closer the house, the, the source of noise, I mean, uh, the more I get, because the, the sound will be, I mean, will get vehicle through the, through the solid material, actually, that the house are built from. But this is just, uh, you know, uh, something that I share with you. I don't know if it's too much relevant to the case. Your main argument so far has been this buffer issue, yes, and I and I, I agree 100% uh, that uh, that an option is to put it to put the garage on that side of it, you know, and that does create an additional buffer. And and um, so I mean there, there's options for you to build a house on this site that uh, that uh, mitigates the problem that you're talking about, you know, and that's. We just don't we don't see that the site's too small or too odd in its shape or anything else about it that you know, it sits on a on a corner here, which is an additional issue. Yeah. And um, 
you know, we're, we're bound by these statutory requirements. It's not like we can't just sit here and visit about it and, and everybody be happy with something. We have, we have to go along with the statutory requirements. And I think you know that. I think you know we have to meet these. And, and, and uh, it just seems to be lacking in trying to meet those. And, and uh, so we're trying to hear all the arguments, but the arguments you're making can be mitigated without encroaching on the setback. Well, uh, we'll I guess we continue this matter if that's permissible, and then we'll, we'll get back to you. Uh, I don't know what there is to continue. Well, maybe we can with an alternative proposal. Well, uh, if you come back with an alternative proposal, it would be nice if it met the requirements. <laughs> the, the, these two alternative proposals you brought to us today don't meet the requirements. Yeah. And, then, and, then you don't need, charm. Uh, and then you don't need to come back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're, uh, it, so, it sounds like from the, conver from the conversations we're having here so far is, is that an argument has not been made that you can't meet the ordinance. And that being the case, I mean, without further arguments today that, uh, that show that, You've, you've had you've had one continuance, you know, so that you can come up with additional arguments. But. Okay. Is, is there any anybody else want to have a discussion on that? Maybe this is a legal question. Is there any reason to continue it? Should we not act upon it and deny the request? Um. You could continue it if it appeared that he was going to bring you an alternative, an option consistent with what you all have been suggesting. But if he's not, he's already heard your views on it. He's presented two options today, and those have not been acceptable to you. So unless he has a plan to bring you an option that is acceptable based on what you've said, a continuance wouldn't. I, I mean, I'd, I'd give them due process and let them continue if they can't come up with a proposal that's, that, that would satisfy us in the next, the next meeting. You're out of luck. You know, you comply with, comply with the statutes. Um, okay, we appreciate that. I mean, that would be my opinion rather than doing something today that you might say is denial of process or something. Okay. I appreciate that. We respectfully request that it be reset for that purpose. For the next meeting, March 4th. So I'll so move. Second. We have a motion and a second to continue this item until the next meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks. See you next, next time. Item number four, case number 13218, request of WWS development for a variance to permit the removal of the sidewalk requirements in the I-2 district located at 4309 Southwest 119th Street. I'm Jim Scott with WWS Development. Our offices are at 1116 Southwest 118th Place. I'd be happy to answer any questions I can about this. <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with this property. We just waived the sidewalk requirements around the corner uh, meeting or two ago or something like that. and. Uh, there's, there's certainly not uh, an opportunity for anybody to walk up and down the yeah. frontage down here. They can walk up and down the frontage in the park, I guess, if they want to. Across the street. Out of their way to walk up and down on that park. Yeah. Huh? Actually, they'd be going out of their way to walk up and down on the side of the park because the parking lot's way inside the park. Right. It is. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the application. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? To approve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item number five, case number 13222, request a BCI communication for a variance to permit the installation of a gravel drive in replace of a hard surface drive Sorry. located at 13144 South Sunny Lane Road. I'm uh, John Lasansi. I live at um, 811 Northwest A Street in uh, Oklahoma City. Um, and we are uh, humbly requesting that you grant us a variance. Uh, re I do represent um, Cox and BCI and also the interests of uh, Mr. Horn, the landowner. Um, presently, the use out there is agricultural. And uh, we are planning on putting a concrete um, ingress um, entrance in as code requires. 
Um, and, but we are asking for a variance for the remainder of the driveway and uh, to put in crushed gravel. Um, if we don't, it would cause um, unnecessary hardship to um, the landowner because of the health hazard to um, both cattle and horses. Um, and what we're, we're asking is we would like to uh, preserve, um, preserve that. Um, it's congruent with the surrounding area, and um, we, we'd ask your blessing on that. Okay. We, we would not require, um, this is a question for the board, we're not going to impose the, to meet the gravel requirements for this kind of surface that Oklahoma City requires because of the nature of the property? That's a question. Well, we don't have open traffic in and out of there. That's what I was yeah. thinking, yeah. I would suggest that that'd be overkill on the I think it would be too. It's a clarification. Move to approve. <laughs> second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to approve the application as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Uh -huh. Item number six, case number 13221, request of Emmis Baptist Church for variance to permit the installation of a sign that exceeds the number, size, and height requirements located at 16001 Southwestern Avenue. Hello, my name is Mark Hansen with Sign Innovations of Oklahoma City. Uh, we reside at 1333 Southeast 38th uh, Street, and we're representing Emmaus Baptist Church. Um, Emmaus is asking, uh, respectively asking for a variance for a sign that we're proposing. Uh, they currently have a sign there that's 16 feet tall. This is a uh, zoned agricultural, and which only allows for an eight foot limit. We're asking for a 12 foot sign. They've, they've decided to go with a, an LED board to allow for messages for them to present their messages. They happen to be on, on Southwestern there in the 16,000 block of Southwestern where the speed limit's 45 miles an hour, so folks are really uh, moving quite readily past there. Um, this is gonna allow them to give a, a sign that folks can see the message as they go by there. And also there is some lettering on their building. The building sits back about a hundred over a hundred yards it's a quite large campus a 20 acre campus there and so we would request that we could leave that little lettering up there's just their little logo and black plastic letters on their building uh, if that would be permitted we're asking for an additional 32 square feet for the sign over what what the agricultural rules would allow Pretty substantial variance, isn't it? It's a like as, as I said. There's already a 16-foot sign. We're going down to 12 feet. The, no, I'm, the, I'm more concerned about the square footage on the sign, right? Because you're more, you're in a third, you're almost a third over the size. Right. It, it was zone commercial. <laughs> It'd be great agricultural. You know, that's been agricultural since Western was a gravel road, and it is a 20-foot campus. So there's quite a, you know, it's quite a large campus, 20-acre campus without any other signage there. Well, the, you know, one argument about the size is it's, you know, essentially a residential area. You know, and you, regardless of the size of the campus, it, it, uh, it creates a, a commercial look. You know, the, the more, the larger signs you get into in an area, oftentimes, and, that, and it's tied to that, you know, signs get larger as you get uh, in the industrial zoning and all that type of thing, so. We've allowed for that brick base at the bottom down there, which takes up quite a bit of it. I mean, you know, if need be, we were just trying to make an aesthetically nice looking sign. Obviously, you can see the top of it there that we went with a, you know, aesthetically nice appearing sign. Um, certainly, we can, you know, take out the base at the bottom and, and, and lose some square footage that way. We're just trying to give them a nice looking sign, again, because of the speed that goes by there. Uh, they want to make sure folks can see it. If you were out there and could see it, it, it doesn't look nearly as big as it does in this photograph versus the, I thought we had a different shot of that showing what it would look like actually in the, in the area there. What, what's the square footage of the, of the message part of the sign? It's a five by eight. No, no, I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. No. 
understand. No, I'm, I'm sorry. The part of the sign that's really the sign and not the base. Okay, uh, beyond the base there. Um, do you know what we're doing? At that point, if we didn't ten, have the ten by eleven, so it looks like. But. Did you have a scheme that actually met the requirements? You mean the under the thirty-two yeah. square feet and, and whatnot? Yeah. Not at this time. That's why we're applying for this. I have some concern with the height of it as well, just across from that residential yeah. uh, neighborhood. I mean, yeah, that, that's taller than the plate line of the houses across the street and it's yeah I don't know how the they, they had the other sign 16 yeah. feet up so oh, we don't know how that's been there but in there and it's, it's, it's certainly um, an easy church to see it's not hidden in any way when you drive down it's very visible well it sits back quite a ways back yeah that's I, all. I, yeah. I, I drove the street but yeah. it's it's the, the, the nature is the, of the signs the one of the existing sign you know just does not have the mass right Right, yes. It may be a little taller, but it just doesn't have the mass. Right. You know, and so the more mass you put into these things by squaring them up and all that, it's really, uh, I, know, I know it makes an impact. That's the reason you want to put nice signs up as impact. But, Absolutely sure. But uh, if it turns into too much of a commercial look in a residential neighborhood, you know, then you... Would there be a square footage that you would be willing to allow us above the agricultural zoning world that we could get by with if you could give me 10 square feet something to work with i could certainly we could certainly work with that again we could take away the you know the base to it and, and take away some of the design to get it more into the appearance for the residential neighborhood i, I would like just a little bit more than what we're allowed if, if, if i can ask for that i have a problem with the height as well so that, well, we, that's what i'm saying i'll bring it down based on that base I could bring it down to two feet, down to say you ten feet. Cut the scale down. On yes. I don't think I could be uh, swayed by anything less than what the ordinance calls for. I so. actually tend to agree with that. Okay. I don't think that you ask for ten percent more. That's not going to. I mean, you can design a hundred foot square foot sign as much as you could a hundred and ten. Right. Same yeah. Impact. So I'm pretty inclined to stick to the ordinance on this. Um, we did, and actually Mark didn't know this, we did actually have another design of a sign that's very boxy and looks very boxy. And if you look on the uh, on the other side of the street, there is a large billboard. Looks like it's right in somebody's backyard, whether that makes a difference or not. They are also going to widen this street to four lanes and put in signalization at some point as well, south and north. Um, so it will, that street will get larger and, and there will be more traffic. This is kind of a, uh, if I can, that's a sign that we had shown up with. It's very boxy. What didn't, didn't leave us much to do with the architecture to kind of match what they did with the building. Uh, I definitely understand the restrictions. Um, so it, it is a matter of aesthetics. Well, one comment I would make is that, you know, if there's small variances, say because of the, of the, uh, because of the design of the sign, you know, with those, you know, odd shapes or something like that. I mean, to me, that's a little bit of an argument. But what's been pointed out to you is that this is substantially larger. You know? And uh, so oftentimes we, we can, enter, and we can uh, entertain the argument, you know, that it needs a little bit of a change just because of the way it's shaped. You know? but, uh, but you're just asking for a lot here, in my opinion. So what if you took the boxy one and added the, the feature you have on the one you proposed? We, we didn't feel like with the brick base that they wanted and with the reader board being 5 by 8 it didn't really lend itself to the structure we had to have just to hold the sign in. Um, so that's why we, we didn't feel like we could do it. That our, our graphic designer didn't feel like there was enough room to do that. Um, before we even did this course, we designed the sign much larger than it was in the <laughs> <laughs> did our research, we decided that uh, you know, to, to try to go smaller. And then when there was an existing 16-foot sign there, we said, well, goodness, we don't even want to go up that high. And uh, because of the size of the campus, um, you know, we, we wanted them to have a nice sign that went with their new building, uh, 
uh, you know, they service the community. They want to put community messages up there. And uh, as you can see, the box of sign does look just very square, plain, mm -hmm. Jane. But if that's what we have to go with, then that's what we'll do. Well, you know, if you want to, if you want to come up with something that uh, you know not so out of uh, character with what we're looking for, you, know, you can bring it back to us if you want to. Okay, it's up to you. Is, is there a may, may I ask? Is there a percentage we've talked about? You know, we've asked for 32 more square feet than, than allows. Is there a percentage you're looking for, or, or is there, or do you just want to see a design? The ordinance no. is what I'm looking for. Okay. No. Okay. Well, we would like Combined to have that aesthetic, opportunity. Aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> Sorry. Not a continuance. Yes. To the fourth of March. That would be fine. So moved. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. We've got a motion and a second to continue this item until uh, the next meeting. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. See you then. No one is here. I want to make a motion. <laughs> to, uh, we want to continue. No. Oh. It's got a favorable staff report. It's an awful I, minimal approach. Do we have to have them here? They don't have to. I'll make a motion them. to approve. Good. Second. Okay. Motion and second to approve item number two. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Your motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We're adjourned.